yeah so the topic is yes so today what we will attempt to you know just you know discuss is geometry okay now why have i chosen this out of all topics okay this uh why have i chosen this out of all topics because you know this is a very visual subject okay very visual you can do a lot of things in geometry without really knowing a lot of other math okay so that's why i've chosen this topic to be central for today's class so let's see so before i start i would like to ask you to try to describe what have you done in geometry till now and uh, you know what does if you had to describe it in let's say few sentences how would you describe it so please try Okay, so um, what I uh, learn in geometry, the topic of geometry is, um, I learn the shapes and uh, the basic, uh, the tight end cast shape. So I learn the shapes. I know how to calculate the angles with using a protractor, a protractor, and I know how to draw circles using the angle of this, using the angle that you want, mm -hmm. using a compass. <laughs> Okay, I see, I see. Okay, that's good. Okay, but this is what you know in geometry, fine. But can you describe geometry like in the sense that what is the highlights for geometry as far as you have studied and things like that, describe the subject? Okay, so geometry is actually a uh, it's a very big subject and I think what I learned in it, um, I don't know if I am, I don't know uh, how much subjects there are, but I know I can tell some basic ones, just like calculating the angles, shapes and calculating the radius of it. Okay. Like that. All right. Calculating, calculating. Okay. So what do you think is the goal of this subject? Let me, this is a more specific question. What's the goal of why do you think we are trying to do geometry? To calculate area and perimeter, which is useful in, which is useful many times. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> that's a good answer. Calculate area and perimeter. Okay. So now if I ask you that, well, I mean, if suppose there is a, a uh, triangle, for example, suppose there is a triangle like this and all the sides are given, then how does geometry help us? So see, the point is that if this, let's say this is three and this is four and this is six, okay? Then certainly to find the area of this triangle, one can do measurements and do it, right? You can actually do like actual measurements, you know, without using geometry. What I mean is like, maybe you can fill it with very, very tiny squares, right? You see, you can maybe fill it with tiny squares of some, some area which you know, and you see how many squares are needed to fill, right? And you can then find the area. So that is by, so this is what we say explicit measurement, right? When someone doesn't know any technique, let's say, and there will be problems even when we will be seeing for which we might not have a proper technique. So there we do explicit measurements to find the area or even for perimeter. Perimeter, so everything is given here. So you just have to add them. explicit measurement. Now, where does geometry differ from this? Why do we then study geometry? Then so you can complete, uh, compute everything by explicit measurement. Okay, so really geometry is, you can think of it as the art of, the way I like to describe it is, is the art of calculating. Okay, sorry, just give me one second. I'll close my WhatsApp. Yeah, yes. It's really the art of calculating shapes or you know quantitative information about shapes meaning area perimeter and such without actual measurement okay okay sure. and you see this is a pattern that is present here throughout any theoretical field you take 
okay, algebra, sure. even in science, like you're sitting at home, but you can still measure the distance from your place to, let's say, the sun. I mean, I mean, we cannot do it, but the people have developed techniques to do it, right? By some trigonometry, angle ratio, they are able to do it. That's how the people find the distance, let's say, from the earth to the sun, isn't it? Yes. So they have formulas yes. to do it. They develop some techniques to do it. And these techniques is all what any theoretical field is about, okay? And geometry yes. is also such a thing. That is the one of the core principles why we are really starting to interested in this subject. And of course, there is the aesthetics also. Uh, I know along with it, there is the aesthetics. So by aesthetics, I hope you, I mean, you understand, right? It looks, it looks very beautiful. Certain figures and configurations really look very symmetric, very appealing. And uh, surprise, sometimes the results are very surprising. And you know, that is the, there's a sense of curiosity and such that takes us forward also. But really these work hand in hand, you know, what is useful. Yes. Yeah, uh, what is useful, you know, gradually evolves into what we find beautiful and, and vice versa and things like that. That is a attraction. Okay, so that is really the why of the subject because really that should, we have this major goal, right? How can you calculate as much as you can without actual measurements, okay? But let's put more specific goals, okay? Really, um, let me describe to you the way geometry is done in the, let's say example, NCRT. So if I take NCRT, Let's you take any class, but I'm just taking, let's say class nine book. Okay. I'm not going to teach you the class nine book. I'm just saying how, what is their pattern? And this is usually same in class seven, six, even 10, 11. Okay. Similar. The pattern is the following. So in geometry, I'm saying, so the first chapter they do is, uh, roughly axiomatic geometry. Now what, so today I'm just trying to give you an overview. Okay. Not discuss the details axiomatic geometry. Now, what do I mean by axiomatic geometry? See, if you look up the word meaning of the word axiomatic, this means definitional. Okay. Or you could say rules. Now, why let me give you example of what an axiom is. So let me just uh, start with a configuration for you on the left hand side. So let me draw this line and this line. And let's say these two lines are parallel. Do you know what parallel lines mean? Um, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So then that's very easy. They, they never meet. They just go straight. Absolutely. Yes. They never meet. Very good. So let's say we take two parallel lines and let's say I draw a line like this. Now, even if you do not know the definition of an angle, I mean, if I ask you to define an angle is probably not the simplest thing to do, but we all feel and understand what an angle means, right? Yes. So this angle, whatever it is, Okay. And this angle, will they be equal? Are they equal? Um, no. No, think again. What it just think intuitively. Don't even think of it like maths. What do you think those two angles will be? Do you think they will be equal or not? Maybe angle one and angle two. So is angle one equal to angle two? Based on your, based on your intuition, what do you feel it should be? For me, I think it's not same. They're not equal. Okay. They are not equal. Okay. Never mind. Let's take another example. Let me take, uh, this example. Let's take this example now. So this is a different example because I'm trying to get a certain point across. This angle and this angle. What do you think about these two angles? Do you think they are equal? Hmm. They look equal, isn't it? So what is an angle really? An angle is trying to measure how wide this ray is, how wide the pair of rays are, yes. right? And if this is a certain width, then you see on, this is just the opposite side, right? This will also be the same. You see? Yes. Yeah. So these two look yes. the same. Isn't it? So that is my point that these two are the same angles. So this is an example where intuitively it is clear. Intuitively, I mean by common sense, by common sense, we realize that these two angles are the same. 
Okay, angle A and angle B are the same by common sense, by just practical, uh, practically what we see. On the other hand, let's say if I take two lines, line like this, and at how many points are they intersecting? Obviously, one point. Oh, yes. Right. Only one point of intersection. One point. Now yes. this is again a very obvious statement. Okay. Now, but the problem with maths, uh, the, the, not the problem, but what maths demands is that, look, these things which look obvious, fine, we will give them the status of obviousness, but we cannot use obviousness to infer things in mathematics. Okay, so to conclude a certain statement in mathematics, and if it's very, very obvious, we, we put it as a rule, we call it a rule. So we are trying to use the obviousness in our subject so that it leads to more natural and interesting and organic results. But we won't introduce them by the name that by the status that they're obvious. We'll say that this is our rule. Okay, so this is a, these two are very obvious statements. So these two become rules. Rules and they are also called axioms. Now, rules and axioms are slightly different things, uh, but we will not go deeper into that right now. This is very similar to like, if you look at uh, morals and laws, okay? Morals are something which we all understand, right? There are some basic standard morals for human humans, and we kind of understand that and go by that, right? And then you look at the laws, the laws of the state or the con or state or country, whatever. You look at the laws. The laws are based on the morals, isn't it? It is immoral to steal. And even there is a law which says that, you know, if you steal, you will have this, this punishment. Okay. But when they write the law, they don't refer to the morals. Isn't it? If you look at a law piece of law, they won't refer to the morals while like, writing the law. Right. So there's something like that, you know, certain, certain things are obvious and we want certainly want them to be in our subject if our subjects has to make any sense. But when we introduce them in our subject, we introduce them as rules and laws not as based on obviousness. So that's what axioms are. And there are several axioms like this. And then there's a whole set of, you know, uh, way they interact and such. But this is what they try to do in the beginning chapters, okay? And then what they do is they have another chapter where kind of they have a lot of definitions. So that was definitional. And here is like, def here, here definitions by definitions, I mean names. So, these two, these angles are called vertically opposite angles. Okay, just a name. And these angles are called corresponding angles. This is another name. And there are hundreds of names like this. And they put all of most of them in one chapter. Okay, and then they move to the next chapter where they have triangles and then slowly, slowly they go on forward. But I don't like this order. So I will do it in a slightly different order with certain additions in between. Okay, so this is kind of how they go about it. But the way I like to go about it, I like to start with the problems first. Okay, the basic things that we're trying to do, like we're trying to do measurements. Okay, so I like to start with lengths and areas. Let's start with areas. Lengths are also interesting, but in fact, areas are, you will see, uh, more visual in some sense, you know. So let's see. Areas. So you have told me that you can calculate areas of certain simple figures. That's fine. But before doing that, can we attempt to define what area means? Yes. Yeah, please try. Yeah, go ahead. Area is the space in an orb, in a, some kind of shape or something, which mm -hmm. is very, which has nothing but just a clear space. So if I have a square right here, inside the square, there is some, uh, you can color it. So there's some kind of um, plain surface or some space. So we, we, if we want to calculate that space inside it, that's called the area. That's called the area. Okay, that makes sense, right? And really the one of the, uh, one of the other points of this is that we like to calculate it using a number. Right? Yes. We put a number to the amount of space in a shape. You can think of it like that, right? So giving a number to the amount of space in a shape. 
now think about it giving a number is not the only way to get an understanding of how big something is right for example if i draw this shape and i draw a bigger shape you can obviously say the bigger shape is bigger than the smaller shape the bigger shape will have more area than the smaller space it's a very obvious thing but yes, that but it has drawbacks that's still a very qualitative definition you're going by the quality of the figure okay then okay. there could be ambiguities right how big is it and if two things look almost the same then there would be a, a controversy things like that that's why we like to put a number we like to just not say that this area is big and this area is small we like to put a number to them we say this area is this many centimeter square okay yes. so this is really just to quantify the process and of course it helps in measurements right because in real life things have a cost to them and things and such right so it's important to have a measurement so giving a number and you see the concept of length is also very simple right how long something is and there also we like to put a number to it okay that's the thing so very good but now the point is that how do you start giving these numbers how do you start or what is the rule for assigning these numbers right what is the rules for assigning these numbers so you see my question like the rules cannot be arbitrary right it has to be uniform for all of us so by what rule do we go by to put numbers so really to answer this question we have to answer even a more fundamental question which is the first shape whose area we prescribe see there has to be some shape whose area you have to define to be something isn't it so that based on that you can describe the area of other figures is that right for example yes sir uh, for example if you don't define if you don't know what 1 cm is you can never understand what 5 cm is yes sir right so but there has to be a starting point there has to be some length whose area we have to define so remember that is a definition there is no question of whether that is correct or wrong there has to be a definition so okay, yeah right so the shape that we start with is in usually in the theories that we do the shape that we start with is the unit square okay so can you define what the unit square is a unit square um i don't know what a unit square but um i know what a normal square yeah same thing like, yeah i don't understand like so so what's a the square then yeah you can describe that itself a yeah, square is a square is a shape mm -hmm. uh, which has the sides um in same in the same length so like example of the square you gave so um if if you wrote one side is equal to 1 cm so that means all the sides should be 1 cm or as well exactly but not just that also the angles have to be 90 degrees yeah. right that is also important part of the definition so really a unit square is a square so unit square is just a square whose side length is 1 Okay. Right? See, this is just a name. It is not important to know the. It is not. It is not essential to know the name, but it is convenient, you know, because we don't want to always say square with side length one, right? Side length one. So unit square is just a name for that. So that's nothing. Okay. So we really have to start by giving an area to this figure. So what is the area of this figure? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think would be the area then? Ah, uh, sir. So uh, the easiest way is a uh, one centimeter into one centimeter. So it is one. It is one. Yeah. One. Right. But one now, exactly that. That's true. Now my question is: Is this a definition? or is this something that you can prove i think okay 
So, if you think about it, this is really a definition, right? As I was mentioning, whenever you're developing a theory in which you are giving numbers to shapes, there has to be some shape that you have to start with whose number you decide. Someone has to decide, right? Because based on that decision and other certain other obvious rules, we, you know, decide the areas for the, for other shapes. Okay, so okay. here, so this is the axiomatic side of it. So this is an axiom. This is a rule which cannot be proved. Okay, so okay. using this, we will show why is the subject of area so interesting because using this axiom, just only almost this only axiom, we will show that you can find areas of other complicated figures. Okay, so let's see, let's, let's take a more complicated shape, slightly more complicated shape. So let's say it is like this. And so, yeah, let me first draw the figure. So this time it is uh, A, B, C, D. And let's say this is four centimeters. Now, what is the area of this figure? So I don't want you to use the formula that maybe you have been told that you know, like four into four. That is definitely will give you the right answer, okay? But we want to understand something more deeper than that. We want to understand why is the area 16, okay? We want to understand why you want, why um, is the area 16 using the fact that this area is one. Okay, so we want to be able to conclude that this is 16 using this, this basic assumption. You see the difference? Okay, otherwise, please ask me. Yeah, Karthi again, you are here. I'm here, sir. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And if you think, yeah, but if you have any doubt with what I said, you can ask me, okay? Uh, can you please repeat the question again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, see, my question is very, the question is, what is the area of this ABCD, of this bigger square? Okay. Yes, sir. It's, it's 16 centimeters square, but... Right, but how? Why is it 4 into 4? Like, you know, like, we must understand why is the amount of space inside this 4 into 4. Like, really, we have been always told this, right? Your teachers in school must have also told you this, isn't it? That it is 4 into 4, length in the breadth. But why? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is a question. Because it's a law, a rule. Because it's a law, a rule. It's a law. Okay, yeah. So this is the thing. Yeah, right. So see, the first one, this this piece is a law. It's a rule. However, this area of A B C D is four into four. It is six. It is. You can say that this four into four thing is a law. You can say it's a law, and you can say it's a rule. But you see, this can be proved. Okay, okay. sure. We will sh show a proof. And then I will show you the difference between why this law is a law. You can call it a law, but it's more of a theorem, something that follows from a more fundamental law. Okay, okay. sure. Yeah.
So you probably know that the answer is 32, right? It's again length and the breadth. But yeah, the question is why is it 32 centimeters?
Can you um, is there any anything like a uh, unit any proof like this thing that you just drew like a unit rectangle added? I don't know if that exists. Okay, no, no, no. There is no, no, no. So see, the, you don't have a unit rectangle. Okay. There is no such thing as a unit rectangle. Because see, if a rectangle is unit and then both the length and the breadth are one centimeter, right? It will become a square. It will become a square, yeah. So there is no unit rectangle, but you can again break the rectangle into unit squares. That you can do. So again, the idea is the same, right? So you break it into unit squares or divide it, I should say, yeah, into unit squares. Sir, sir can you please um, like explain it? Yes. So you see in the previous question, we also broke our big square into small squares, right? Yes, and that was really interesting. See, it, it may look not very interesting because we also know, we already know that the answer is <laughs> 16 unit square we knew. Okay, but the idea is really new. Okay, that if you break it into small pieces and it's not just, it's, it's new, but it's also very simple, right? It's a natural idea. So, yeah, so this is like uh, you're breaking it into small squares and each square's area you are adding. Is that right? Okay. Sure, sure. maybe um, 32 unit space can fit in the rectangle. Absolutely, that is the same thing that you have to use here. That's right, perfect. So I'm not going to the details as you have said, just like this, right? You can do eight of them like this and then four like this and you will get just you can do the details, right? I'm just giving you the idea. So the idea is again, simple. So you see, this is what makes the subject so interesting, right? From just a small piece of information, that area of a unit square is one centimeter square. Just from that, we are able to calculate area of so many other figures. Looking back, it looks very simple. That yeah, what else can we do? But we have never thought about it before. Okay, very simple thing, very natural thing. But we have never thought, we have always just used the formula length into breadth. Even I never thought about it in my school days. Okay, but anyways, yeah. I think nowadays they do some demonstrations and all, but school, my time, this was not there. So anyways, this is the thing. But now let's move to more interesting things. How about I move from there to a triangle? Now, of course, this is a triangle here, but this is a special type of triangle. Okay, it is called- This is an isosceles. Okay, think again. So if yeah this is an isosceles triangle or uh what is an isosceles triangle uh, this is a triangle which has um two sides the same length but one side but Different except length. one yeah but so here the sides don't have the same lengths okay at least i have not said it even you can see that they don't look the same right bc is bigger than ab and this one is certainly bigger than both. So it's not isosceles. But as you can understand that this is 90 degrees, right? Yes. So 90 degree you understand, right? Just like a floor, this is your floor and then this is your wall. And this, this angle is, mathematicians have chosen to call it 90 degrees, something like that, okay. Sure, sure. can you call it a right angle or perpendicular? Yeah, exactly, it's called right angle. Yeah, and based on this, uh, the triangle is called right angled triangle. Okay, but again, this is just a name. This is a name, a definition, which is not very, very, very important. Okay, but of course we should know it for convenience. Okay, so let's see now if the AB is let's say five and BC is seven, then again, my question is what is the area? So, so Sir, what is the length of the A? 
Ah, uh, so this is five centimeter, and this is uh, seven. And the length of three? seven centimeter. So the yeah, these two are given. Three square. It is five. I think it's two hundred and forty-five centimeters square. Sorry. Can you repeat the answer? Sir, is it two hundred and forty-five centimeters? Two hundred and forty-five. Two hundred and forty-five. Think about it. Do you, don't you think this is too much? This is too big. Sir, sir, sir. Hmm? But um, in this, sir, sir, I only know how to calculate the area of rectangle and square, but I didn't learn how to calculate uh, of. This nice. No problem. No problem. Sure that's fine. But even if you don't know that, that's not that's not an issue. The point is that see, two forty-five centimeters. Go just use your intuition. Don't you think it is too much? It's too much. Sir, right? Yeah. But um, let yeah I, please. If, uh, but when I uh, multiply them all, uh, this answer came. Uh, but I thought that it's ch chill in the B. Hmm. Hmm. Right. That's right. And that intuition will basically tell you that this is not possible. Okay. However, see, till now what have we done? We had a rectangle, and that rectangle area we found using unit square. Using unit square, we found area of big square and rectangle. Now, we will use rectangle to find area of a triangle. this is the approach using a simpler topic to do so basically think of how you can create a rectangle out of this triangle then you will discover your own formula okay so build a rectangle out of this use the imagination out of this triangle think like draw some other line something you know extend the shape think about it Wow! Nice. Okay. Good. So now what? Very good. I'm sure now uh, there are two triangles over there. Two right angle triangles. Hmm. Okay. Two right angle triangles. Very good. Yeah, uh, and it is totally we make them all. It is one one right angle. Sorry, I, your voice was not clear. Can you please repeat that part? If we uh, totally mix the lines or take the line out in the middle, mm -hmm. so uh, it will be one whole rectangle. Right, and then that rectangle. What is the area of that? It is thirty-five centimeters square. Very good. So now, what should be the area of the triangle? I think we need to half it. Very good. That's your formula, yeah. And you have just discovered. Your, I just said one word, right? I just said build a rectangle out of it, and you discovered your own formula. That's it. It is correct, yeah. So half it, and it's thirty-five by two centimeters square. Nice.
right feel good this feels this feels really good to me when i did first did it on my own and yeah this is the discovery you're making very small of course but yeah very good this is a and so in general in general when this is a and this is b then what will be the area a times b half of it ah uh, yes sir Ah, okay. And this is another go good thing. This is an algebraic thing, that when you are doing something, some calculation for numbers for some specific numbers. Here it was five and seven, but you are realizing that uh, the exact number is not really very useful here. I could have done this for any any two numbers. So you just write some variables there. A is a variable. B is a variable. Basically, they behave like numbers, but the power is that you can put them. you can put any number in place of them okay so they take the form of a formula okay yes so so this is the formula for area of a right triangle okay so in words because as after all we are humans we understand words better right half into base into height now i'm sure you are smart kid you'll understand this is the base right and this is the height and this is right wonderful So, sir, as for the formula, yes. First, you need you need to multiply the height and the base, or base and the height. So you will get the answer. Then you need to half it. Absolutely, yeah. We need to half it because these two triangles are same, right? Yes. So yeah, and why are these two triangles same? Because they look the same, right? We don't yes, have sir. a proof. See, we do not have a proof. because we don't know we don't even know what two triangles being same even means if i go to the very axiomatic thing okay but we don't have to go in such details otherwise we can't enjoy the subject <laughs> okay we will go slowly slowly but i think in the beginning i already said too much about axioms and all and i think in class 6 we don't need to say too much okay slowly slowly i will put in the axioms okay i'll maybe when i give homeworks and such okay so okay. yeah so that was the area of a thing now let's take another figure you will be surprised how many how much you can discover on your own okay like it's almost seems like we don't even need a book okay i'm not saying we don't need a book i'm saying just you know we are able to discover our own formulas in our own way now i have drawn another figure do you recognize this figure do you know uh let's say it's an irregular shape it's an irregular shape okay but um it's not totally irregular because or maybe i did not specify it but this two are parallel this is i agree this is irregular but is it completely irregular or something is there it's not completely irregular we can break it into shapes like triangle a rectangle okay rectangles and triangles no but what is this called okay that's not very important but just for definition this is called a trapezium okay trapezium. maybe i've not heard the name it's not that's not this is not important it is just for having a common name that all of us can talk about okay that's why we just give a name trapezium it looks like it looks like you know any place uh, any it looks like a rectangle which you are looking from this perspective if you stand here and look at a rectangle you will feel like it's going in right like if you look at a railway track right it kind of feels like the two tracks are going together right or like a cricket pitch yeah. if you are looking from far something like that so it's more like a perspective thing okay um right so i think this is okay now the question is how do you find the area but i need to tell you what information i want to give you so let's say if i tell you that um, ab so the exact numbers are not important again i want you to realize this early in maths that the exact numbers are not very important lot of students get hung up on oh what is a number is it 2.2 or 2.3 so the exact number is not very but i hope you realize it so okay so this is 5 and this is 8 and uh, let's say it's, that this height is again anything you can take it to be 6 maybe okay now try to observe one thing if this height is 6 then all the other heights are also 
right? This will also yes, be so, six. So like, so like the a the the a height is also six, and the c height is also six. The c height, matlab. What is the c height? Yes, I think I don't know what's a c height, but I think this line, this line over here. You can point it, yeah. No, no, no. That is different. That is a slanting line. That is will certainly be more in length, right? Think about it. Uh, yes. Just um, so suppose you want to. This is your point. Suppose you want to go from here to, let's say, this is the river, right? And you want to go as fast as you want. Certainly, you want to go perpendicular. Right? You want to go straight down, right? If you go like this. Don't you think you will take more time? Yes, sir. Right, yes, and yes, you yes. can even you can see in the figure like this is certainly longer, looks longer. Yeah, so that's not a height. By height, I always mean something that is perpendicular. Okay, like this perpendicular line from the top to the bottom. This pub, this will be same for all the things because the lines are parallel. Whenever you take a pair of pair of parallel lines, then it will always be like this right all the heights are going to be same because the lines are parallel they are not meeting right so the distance is being maintained all the time okay so yes so i guess that's fine and yeah now what is the question so the question is that given all this information given these three things can you find the area of the trapezium find you know area of trapezium so again i'll erase some of the information because this repeating uh, so that you can think more clearly yeah Said this is too hard. It's too hard. Um, okay. Yes. See, what figures do we know? We know right angle triangles. Yes, sir. Right. She said this is right angle triangle right there. That you just drew. Ah, exactly. So see, we know rectangles and right angle triangles. So let's try to divide our shape into right angle triangles and rectangles. Right. Okay. So there's one right here. Mm hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's what we will do. Yeah, so let's do that. Yes. Okay. So now, can we find the area of these right angle triangles? These right angle triangles. So here, what we do? But here it will be three. So yeah, but then we'll be going outside the figure, which is not a problem per se. But yeah. So, sir, I think over here it will be three. Mm, so why? Three. Why? <laughs> Sure, because um, the eight is carrying all this, all the thing down here. Mm. All the thing down here, no, and but... over here, mm -hmm. and over here, the defy is starting. 
what is yeah the five no but then this part is five right it means that this portion is five so we need to do a eight minus five no 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 see yeah but then this portion is also remaining right if this is five and if this part is three then that's already eight so something is wrong right then this part is missing So I think this part is also three. Oh, no, but if no, that but is three. Hmm. But there's a difference over here. And this yeah. part is three, but how can this part, this big part could be three? Exactly. And also the problem is that if this part is three and this part is three, then that is six. And then this part is five and that's 11. The total will become 11. But if you do small, but this much big shape. And, no, and the total cannot be 11 also, right? Because it's only 8. That is another problem, isn't it? The total that is DC, that is just 8. That is not 11. So something is wrong in the reasoning, right? Yeah, yeah so something is wrong in the yes, reasoning. Yes. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So we don't know. Let's see. So let's use some labels, okay? Let me put some labelings. So let me call this E and let's call this F. Okay. So what do we know? We know that the total is 58, right? DF plus EF plus CE. Total is eight. This is what we know, right? FE, yes. we know is five. Is that okay? So Fe is five. So yeah. then we at least know the area of this triangle. Yes, sir. Is that right? Area of this triangle is 30. Sir, okay. Sir, sir. Yeah, it's a rectangle, right? So that is just five into six, 30. Okay. Now we have to worry about the two triangles. Mm -hmm. The problem with the two triangles is that we do not know what the base lengths are. We don't know this, right? And we also don't know this. Okay. Sir, sir I can go over here. It is uh, three. Okay. No, but if that is three, then five plus three is already eight. Then how much, then this has to also be something, right? The total is eight. Think, the total is eight. And this is already five. Right. right. I think I think here is one and here is two. No, we can't say like that. It could be it could be one point it could be zero point five and two point five also. You can't say. Right? It's it could two. be that. So we are not sure, we don't know, right? This is where the algebra comes in. This is a slightly new aspect of the problem. So the similar aspect is that you can break it down into known figures, but the new aspect is that you have, you know, new possibilities. If this is X, then how much will this be? This will be three minus X. Think about that, right? Whatever this is, we do not know what it is, but if it is some X, then this will be three minus X, isn't it? Because the total has to be three. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah, yeah, that is, so this is a new aspect of it, okay. A different way of thinking. So DF plus EC is equal to three. This we know, okay. Even though my figure doesn't totally suggest that because the way I've drawn, this looks much bigger. But that is the whole point of doing geometry. We do not, we want to conclude things without actual measurements. So we know that DF plus EC is three. So if DF was X, then the EC would be three minus X, okay. So I guess that is fine. Now, I mean, it looks doesn't look very hopeful because we don't know what the X is, but still let us have faith and continue with finding the area. Okay, so ADF, the area of ADF would be six into X by two. You agree with this, right? And the area of BEC 
would be 6 into 3 minus x divided by 2. Okay, so again, you see BEC is also a right triangle. And the height is 6, the base is 3 minus x. Is that all right? Okay, so again, we are just applying the formula which we have proved already. Okay, height into base divided by 2. So finally, so even here, it, do, it looks like, you know, I, we don't understand what is going on, right? We don't know if finally we are going to get the answer, proper answer or not. But let's continue. What we want to do is we want to add ADF plus BEC, isn't it? Plus the rectangle, right? Because after yes. adding only, we will get the full answer. So let's see, if you add it, something interesting happens. Here you have six into x by two, and here you have six times three minus x by two, okay? And ADEF is just 30, ABEF is just 30, so we don't have to worry about that, okay? So this part here, you can take the six common, right? You can take the six by two common, and you can write like this. Is this step okay for you? The taking common while a step, the second last step, Sir, I think it's a little hard. This is a little hard, the, right? The, yeah, the, because probably the, you have not done algebra, so that's not a problem. See, the whole issue is this, that suppose if this was some, okay, let's do one more step here, then you will understand maybe. Let's see, this is not hard. So here, if it's six by two times X, you can just write that as three times X, right? And this you can write as three times three minus X. Is that okay? Right, just canceling, yes, okay? And now just multiply. So when you multiply three with three, you get nine and three with minus X, you get minus three X. Is this step also okay? Yes, sir. Just like normal multiplication, okay. just treat X like a number. Okay, now you see that three X and the three X will get canceled. This is what is happening. This is a good thing that is happening. So sure, so sure it is, um, so minus three x is also it will also get cancelled. So yeah. And um, so the only thing we need to do is nine plus thirty. So which is thirty nine. Absolutely. That's that's the answer. Thirty nine centimeters. Thirty nine centimeters square. You see. So this is not a new thing. Of course, there is a formula for this which I will tell you. And basically, we have derived the formula only. Okay, but. The idea is that being able to compute the area of a trapezium of this kind of figure without any prior knowledge, okay? Just breaking it into simpler things and doing it. Okay, okay. without new formula. Okay, so this is the thing. So this is what I wanted to display. And here I hope you, you realize that, you know, geometry has so many possibilities. Just with a very small number of assumptions, we are able to conclude so many things. Yes, okay. Sir. And also my favorite topic in math is geometry. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, okay, that's nice. I mean, and you are good at it. Like you are able to break the thing and do it and so on. So that's very good. Okay, so yeah, so on Wednesday, yeah, so let me uh, just uh, stop the recording now. So I was just... Uh...